Today, we're not just exploring, we're diving into the heart of WebSockets. As a quick recap, WebSocket revolutionized communication on the web by establishing persistent full duplex channel between clients and servers. Now, if you've been following along, in our previous video, we unveiled the magic of WebSockets and even crafted a lively chat application where users could engage in a group conversation in a shared chat room. It was a blast. But today, brace yourselves for something even more exciting. We're taking the concept of real-time communication to a more personal level. Picture this a one-on-one -on -one chat application that allows users to have private, secure conversation. And guess what? We're not stopping there. We'll be immortalizing the chats by persisting them in the MongoDB database. But before we jump into the code, a quick shout out to those who want to deepen their understanding of WebSockets. So if you missed the introduction in my previous video, find the link in the description and watch it. It's worth it, I promise. Now, if you're not part of our community yet, hit that subscribe button, join me on social media and join me on my journey of exploration and learning. And of course, coding. I release new and exciting content every week and I wouldn't want you to miss out. I'm Alibu, a seasoned software engineer and I will be guiding you through today's exploration. Without further ado, let's embark on this coding adventure. We'll build a one-on-one -on -one chat application, explore the intricacies of WebSockets and master the art of persisting data in MongoDB. Are you ready? Let's get started. In the previous tutorial about Spring Boot and WebSockets, we built together a chat application, but it was a kind of little bit specific. So we had everyone is publishing to the same queue and at the same time also everyone is subscribed to the same queue. This means a message sent by Alex will be seen by Hunter and Marianne too and the same for the other users. So every time and each time a new user connects to the chat application all the users will be notified and they will see that a new person has joined and he will see all the messages coming from everyone, which is fine and nice to have a public or a general chat application. So now we want to build something a little bit more advanced and a little bit more personalized. So what we want to build is to have a one-to-one -one chat application. So we will, we will try to keep the same concept, but we want to have a private chat. So we want to have a private communication between, for example, Alex and Hunter or Hunter and Marianne and so on and so forth. So next, let me explain to you how the diagram or how the queue and the communication between this private chat will be. Now let's understand how a one-to-one -one chat is going to look like. So let's take, for example, two users, John and Marianne, and they will be talking to each other. So the concept is John will be publishing a message to Marianne's queue and it will be named, for example, Marianne slash queue slash messages. And then from the other side or from the other user's side, Marianne will be subscribed to her own or its own queue. So Marianne will be subscribed to a queue called Marianne slash Q slash messages and so on and so forth. So now let's see when Marianne will be sending a message to John. So here we have Marianne now on the left hand side. So Marianne will be publishing a message to John slash Q slash slash messages. So Marianne will be publishing message to John on his own queue and then John should be subscribed to his own queue in order to receive messages immediately. So this is also like part of the how WebSockets works. And for people who started watching the video from this point, I would like to invite you to check the old or the previous video I published about WebSockets where I explained really good how WebSockets work. All right. So now this is how a one-to-one publishing and subscribing 
to uh, each other's event and to each other's messages is going to look like the next part i will explain to you how this is gonna be like an overview of our application after understanding how a one-to-one -one chat or communication works with message brokers so now let's assume that we have a connected user at this present moment is mr john and mr john is subscribed to his own queue which is called john slash q slash messages and of course in one-to-one -one chat application so everyone can talk with everyone so let's assume that alex will be talking with john uh, hunter the same and marianne so alex hunter and marianne they will be publishing or pushing messages on john's queue and john should be subscribed to his own queue as explained before but now we need some information from Alex, Hunter and Marianne in order to know and understand who sent a message. Okay, so we know already to whom this message was sent, but we need to know the sender. And then after that, so this will be some information that we will provide later on. And after that, we want to persist the chat between each users in order just to have for the next time for example when the new when, when the user logs out and logs in again he will find trace of all the messages so we will be persisting everything and for that and as explained before we will be using a no sql database and for this case and for this tutorial we will be using a mongodb and for that if you want to learn a little bit more about mongodb i would like to invite you to check my website where you have a full course that will explain and help you understand mongodb all right so now let's continue so here we have john and after after receiving a message or after like sending any message to this John's queue, this means that we will have or we need to persist this communication. So for that, we will have a chat room. So a chat room, it will be a document and then the service and so on and so forth. So we will have a chat room. So the chat room will, will look something like that. So for example, we will have two chat rooms, one chat rooms for, for example, Hunter and John, and then John and Hunter. So we will give it the same chat ID. So we will have Hunter John, but we will have the sender ID and the recipient ID are reversed. So for example, the first time we will have the sender ID is John and the recipient ID is Hunter. And then we will have the sender ID is Hunter and the recipient ID is John. So we, we will be creating a pair of chat rooms between two or between each couple of persons that will be talking together. Now let's take, for example, the Alex and John. So the same way we will be creating a chat ID or a chat room and we will give it an ID Alex and John and the sender is John, recipient is Alex and the sender ID from the other side is Alex and the recipient is John. So then if every time we receive a message, of course, we need to keep trace or to save this message. So for that, we will need a document. We will call it chat message. And for that, we will have the chat ID who like to whom this message uh, or between whom this message was sent. So we have, for example, the sender ID is Hunter. So Hunter sent a message to John and the content is high there. And we can also have a timestamp. And then from the other side, we can have, for example, a communication between Alex and John, and it will be the chat ID, Alex, John, the sender ID is Alex and the recipient ID is John. So the content also, hello, jo John, with a timestamp. All right. So this is a global overview, how our application is going to look like. So here, as you can understand, we will be having some documents and this one, we will explain it in just a few seconds. All right. So now let's move on and let me explain to you which documents we will need for our database. Perfect. Now let's see together how our document or like the links between or the relations between our different uh, documents in our database will look like. So for that, we will, first of all, we will need a document where we need to persist our different users. So for the user, we will have a nickname, full name and the status. So the nickname should be unique 
and the full name like it's the full name of the connected user and a status whether if the user is connected or disconnected like whether it's online or offline so then we will have a chat room where we will have a chat id center id and a recipient id so as you see here so a user can be at the same time the sender and the receiver so that's why here i just put it two lines or two connections with the chat room the same with the chat message we will have a sender and the receiver id and then we will have the chat room so as you know like with no SQL databases, we don't have these relationships, but it's just a diagram to explain to you how things are going to be linked all together. So this is a simple overview of our application. So now the next step is start coding. So let's start doing it. So first of all, let's start with creating a new Spring Boot project. So as always, just go to the Spring Initializer or use your preferred way of creating a Spring Boot project, whether from the, you know, the IDE or from the web as I'm doing right now. So here, first I will be using a Maven project, Java language, and let's use the latest stable version, which is 3.15 at this time. And then let's go ahead and create our group id so i will call it com.alibu and then the artifact will be web socket so web socket right here and here i will just update the description with web socket and this is will be our package name and we'll be using jar packaging and also java 17 and now let's go ahead and add some dependencies so first we need our spring web and then we need web sockets and then we need mongodb so here mongo just type mongo and here be careful you need to use the spring data mongodb not the reactive mongodb all right and finally we need lombok just to reduce the boilerplate code and all we need to do now is to click on generate and then open our project in our preferred IDE. So let's go move, move ahead and do it. So here we have our Spring Boot project. And the first thing that we need to do, we will be creating a Docker Compose file where we will have our services that we will be using. And in this case, we will be using MongoDB and Mongo Express in order to have our database and also like a tool to explore this database. So here in the root folder, I will create a new file and I will call it docker-compose.yaml. And here, just be careful, the name should be docker-compose. And here, so we will be having services. And the first one, we will call it mongodb. And then the image will be from mongo. And then we will be we will need a container name. So let's call it mongo underscore db. And after that, we will need to map some ports. So the first one or like mongo will be working on 27017 over 27017. Then we will need to map some volumes and here we will have volumes. And for that we will be, we will be using a mapped volume. So it will be mongo and then slash data. So also, if you are new to Docker, I would like to invite you to check the video that I posted before on my YouTube. It will help you start with Docker. All right, so after the volume, we need to specify some environment variables. So the first one is called Mongo, and then underscore init DB. So to init a database and then root username. So here we need just to give it, to give a username and then equals, I will call it Alibu for this case. And then the second one, we will be using or we need a password. So I will also just copy this one for a faster update. And this one is called password. So mongodb init mongo underscore init db underscore root underscore password. And then you need to specify the username and the password. And that's it. So now we are done with the MongoDB service. Let's now create a Mongo Express. So for the Mongo Express, we will need an image, which is called also Mongo Express. 
and then let's give it a container name and let's call it mongo underscore express and after that here there is a property called restart and let's put it to always so like we want always to restart our container and now let's map it to a port so the port let's use 8081 over 8081 for example so this is the 8081 is the default port for mongo express so let's use it all right next we need to specify also some environment variables so here the first one is called mongo express underscore config and then underscore mongo db underscore admin username so admin username is one word so here let's call it also alibu and i will duplicate this one and here it will be also admin password so let's rename this one to password as you can see right here and the last one is also i will just copy and adjust so it's uh, mongo express config mongodb and here we have server so our server is our mongodb server all right so this is the server that we want to connect to and finally at the same level of services right here we need to create some volumes so here we just need to create a volume let's call it mongo and then colon and just brackets so this is going to reference this one all right so again if you if you're new to docker and docker compose i would like to invite you to watch the video and you will learn many things about docker so now we have everything up and running so in order to start these two services all you need to do is to open the terminal whether from your ide or your laptop's terminal and just type the command docker dash compose up and you can also use minus d for a detached mode but let's keep it this way and see if everything is fine so for my case i already have a container called mongodb so i will just go ahead and start it from there all right so now let's move on and let's start creating our application all right now let's go ahead and configure the connection to our database so here all we need to do is to provide some properties and you know my style i would like to work with yaml representation you can also continue working with properties it's also fine and it depends on your personal preferences so first i will provide some information spring dot data and then dot mongo db and then i need to provide the user name so as we made for the configuration the username is alibu so this is what we provided in here and the same for the password so then we have password same alibu and then we need to provide the host uh, not additional hosts but just host so which is local host because like we are running our application locally and then we are running it on the port 27017 so it's 27 here and then we have a database so our database that we want to use let's call it chat underscore app all right so this database we need to create it later on and then we need to provide the authentication database which is admin all right and then i want to run our application on the server dot port 8088 all right so now we have our application configured and ready to connect to our database called chat app that we need to create later on so now we can move on and start configuring our web socket now let's open our java package right here and under com.alibu.websocket let's create a new class let's call it web sockets config And I would like to place it under the package called config. All right. So it would be config.websocket config. All right. Let's hit enter. And here we have our configuration class. So first of all, in order to mark this one as a configuration class, let's give it the annotation configuration. And then we would like to enable the WebSocket message broker. 
this, so let's use the annotation called enable WebSocket message broker. And then in this WebSocket config class, we want to implement an interface called WebSocket message broker configurer. And as you can see, this is the one that we are talking about. So let's select this one. And first let's have a look at this interface. So I'm going to download the source and let's see what this interface is about. So this interface defines method for configuring message handling with simple messaging protocol, example stomp. So this is what we will be using from WebSocket clients. So here, as you can see, we have a bunch of default methods. That's why when we implemented this interface, we didn't get any error message telling that we need to implement the missing th methods. So because we have default implementations and as you can see, it's all empty implementation. All right. So now let's continue with our configuration and we need to override two methods or three methods exactly. So the first one, there is a method called here. So I will use implement methods, the shortcut. And also every time I use a shortcut, you will see a green pop up right here telling you which shortcut I'm using. So we have a message called configure message broker. So configure message broker. So it's the last one and it's the one having a parameter called message broker registry. So let's click on this one and now let's delete this and start configuring our broker. So first we have registry and then we want to enable the simple broker. And then I want to use a prefix, which I want to call it slash user. So the destination of our broker will be slash user. And then let's add another property. So here I want to set the application destination prefixes and I want to call it slash app. All right. So here I have an extra parenthesis. Let me remove it. And finally, we need to add a registry dot set user destination prefix. And also I want it to be slash user. So slash user. And that's it. Now we have the configuration of our message broker. So next we need to register our stomp endpoints. So for that, let's again implement methods. And we have a method that we need to implement called register stomp endpoints. So for this one, we need to have a registry and then add endpoint. So our endpoint will be slash ws to say, for example, this is the path for our WebSocket and then dot with socjs. All right. So now we have the second method already configured. We need also to configure another one. So the latest method that we need to implement is how we want to convert our messages. So we need to add a message converter and this will handle the conversion or like the serialization and deserialization of our messages. So for that, let's again override another method and it's called configure message converters. So this one, it comes with a list of message converters and then let's return false here. And after that, I will tell you or I will explain to you why we need this false later on. So for that, we will need an object of type default content type resolver. And let's call it resolver equals new default content resolver. And then, so now we need to set some properties. So here we have our resolver dot set default MIME type. So our default MIME type, we want to use application slash JSON. So we have here a class called MIME type utils dot application underscore JSON. All right, so let's use this one. Also, we can use import static. So to make it shorter and more readable. So here we need also to provide with what is the mapping or the converter that we want to use. And for that, we can use the mapping Jackson to message converter. So this one, let's call it converter equals new mapping to Jackson message converter. 
all right so then we need to tell our converter that we want to set an object mapper and here we can use an object of type object mapper and then we need to give it or tell it which resolver that we want to use so here we want to set the content type resolver which is our resolver we just configured and of course we need to add this converter to the list of the message converters that we have so dot add and then we need to pass our converter that we just configured and then we return false and I will tell you later on why we need this false all right now let's understand why we need to return false here for this configure message converter so first I will hit control or command and then click on this message on this method so this will redirect us to the delegating WebSocket message broker configuration so this is the default configuration that Spring will be using and here as you can see from the code so if the configure message converter so this is the method that we just implemented this one so if this one will return false this means that we don't want to use the register or we don't want to register the defaults all right so that's why we need to return false here also i would like to invite to just play a little bit with this one with the return type you can return true in here and then check why or how this is gonna work all right so now let's move on and start implementing our application all right after configuring our WebSocket, we need to start implementing our application so the first thing that we need to do is to create a user object so i will create a package call it user and then a user class so this user i will need these annotations so first getter and setter from lombok and i want it to be a document since i want it to be persisted to my mongodb database and then I will have a private string nickname so let's call it nickname and then also I would like to have a private string full name and finally I want to have a status for so like to say if the user is online or offline and then we call it status so for this one you can whether create an enumeration or you can use a string simply all right so for my case i want to create an enum and i want to call my the two status of the user whether the user is online or offline so here should be a comma and now we have the status and we have the user document and of course this nickname i want it to be an id and here the id should be from spring framework .data .annotation package all right so now we can close this one and now we can move on and create the user service and then the user controller for this user domain all right so now i will create another class and i will call it user service and in this user service first i need to make it a service so i need this service annotation from spring and of course i need required args constructor and now i need to create three methods so the first one it will be a public void save user so this one is to save a user and i will require a user object all right then i will i would like to have another one so public void disconnect so this one is to disconnect a user and also i will ask for a user object and then I need to disconnect my user and finally I would like to have a public list of users and I will call this one find connected users so this will return the connected users from my hour from my application so here let's return null for the moment and we will implement these methods one by one so here what we need to do we need to have our repository in order to be able to communicate and interact with our database so here let's inject private final let's call it user repository 
and let's call it repository as a short variable so for now we don't have a user repository class so let's go ahead and create interface in the same package websocket.user and here we need to extend mongo repository all right and this mongo repository is of type user and then a string so the string is the type of our id all right so now we have our repository ready to use so then let's start with the save user so here when we save a user because saving also means connecting and we will see how this is going to work later on you can also feel free to update adjust rename and like introduce other objects introduce dtos representations requests and so on and so forth this is just a tutorial to show you how things work and then I will leave you all the freedom to extend and to improve your code and application. So here for the user, I want to make sure that each time I want to persist a new user, I want to make to set a status, which is online. Okay. And then all I need to do is repository dot save my user. All right. So this is the save method. Then to disconnect a user, all I need to do is the following. So here I will create var and then I will say stored user or connected user equals repository dot find by ID. And then I will provide the user dot get nickname, which, which is our identifier. And then I will do or else I will just return none. Okay. And next, if my stored user is not null, what I want to do is to say my stored user dot set status and then offline and finally repository dot save my stored user. So it's just updating the status for the user. And of course, we need to update the status only when we find our stored user. All right. And finally, here, what we want to do is simply to return repository dot find all by status. So for now, we need to pass the status dot online. And we don't have yet this method. So let's go ahead and create it. So and then that's it. All right. So now we have our method. We have our service ready to use. Let's move on and start implementing our controller. After finishing the user service, we need to create a controller for the service. So let's create a class and call it user controller. And for that, we need, first of all, an annotation here, a controller just to mark it as a controller. And of course, we need the required args constructor in order to inject our dependencies. So here, let's use private final our user service and let's call the variable service. And here we need three methods. All right. So the first one is the save user or adding the user and then disconnecting the user. And finally, we need the method that will return the list of the users. So here I will say public user, and then I will add the annotations and I will explain them one by one. So here add user. And for that, we need our user object. All right. So then I need to call my service dot save. And then I need to save this user and just return the user that we received. Okay. So now let's start with the annotations. First, this will be a message mapping. So I will, so we want after the user is connected so like now we talk for about the ui that i will also uh, explain and implement it step by step so from the ui we will have a form where the user needs to type his nickname and full name and after that we need to notify all the users and send a message to our web socket okay so here we need to have a message mapping so that's why we will be using slash user dot add user to add a new user and then we also to forward and inform all the connected users that we have a new user joining so we will display this new user in the list of the connected users so here we have send to 
so we want to send it to a specific topic so here we have slash user slash topic so this is an this is a new queue that will be automatically created and we will be sending all the notifications or like some type of notifications to this queue all right and now to in order to say that this is the object or the body of our request but in in web sockets we call it a payload so we need to add the annotation payload all right so now let's move on and implement the other method so public user so here we are just returning the user because we need to subscribe to this queue later on like from the uh, from the front end we need to subscribe to this to this topic or to this queue and in order to receive the notification or if something has happened we need to return some object so that's why we are returning the user because the user contains the information that we want to use in order to display the correct behavior and and ui for our final users all right so then let's call this one disconnect and of course we have now our payload so we understand what i'm writing here and then we have user and then we need to call service dot disconnect my user and then i will want to return the user and of course here i will just copy these two and paste it in here so now i will just call this one disconnect user instead of add user disconnect and again i will notify to the same queue that some user is disconnected all right and then we need again to update the list of the users and finally we will have a simple get mapping okay so this one i will call it slash users in order to fetch the list of the connected users and i will return a public response entity and of type user or sorry of type list of users and this one we'll call it find connected users all right so and simply i want to return a response entity dot okay and then my service dot find connected users so we are done with our user controller let's move on and implement the next step of our application now let's move on and implement the chat room so first i will create a new class and i will call it chat room and i will create it in a package i will call it chat room so just to organize by domain my application so here what i need to do first we need our getter method and then our setter and i will need all args constructor and no args constructor and also the builder annotation and finally i need the document annotation so now for the chat room we will have a private string id and this one will be the identifier so let's give it the id annotation and then we will have a chat room id or a chat id and it will be of type string all right then we have the sender id so private string sender id and finally private string recipient id all right so these are the information that we need for our chat room then let's create our chat room service so chat room and then service so i'm gonna make this one full screen and of course we need the service annotation and also required args constructor so then for the chat room service we will need mainly one method which is to get the chat room id so here i will create a public and then optional and then it will be an optional of string since we want to just get the chat room id and i will call it get chat room id so this is our method and for this chat room id we will need few parameters so first we need string string sender id and then i need another string which is the recipient id and finally i want to add a flag of type boolean 
and I will call it create new room if not exists. This creates new room if not exists is for the first time when someone sends a message to another one. So like when we send a message for the first time from one user to another. All right. So if we don't have the chat room, we just created just to reduce the boilerplate code. So here, what we need to do is we first, we need a repository. So let's go ahead and create a private and then final, and let's call it chat room repository and let's call it chat room repository. So we don't have it yet. And let's go ahead and create this interface in the same package chat room. And now we need to extend Mongo repository and then it will be of type chat room and then string. All right. So now we have our repository and then what we need to do, we need to return our chat room repository and then we want to find by sender ID and recipient ID. All right. So we don't have this method yet, but we will create it just in a few seconds. So then since we don't have it, let's go ahead and create this method and it will be an optional of string find by sender ID and recipient ID. So here we don't need the, the string, but it needs to be a chat room object and the rest will be just fine. Okay. So let's go back here. So now, if we find this or now I, I will have my Lambda expression in here and now I will create a new room if we don't have it. So here, if create new chat room, if not exists, I will do something. Otherwise I will just return an optional dot empty. All right. So here, what we did, finding the by sender ID and recipient ID, but we are trying to return. So this one will return an optional of chat room. So we need to map it. So here, what we want to map our chat room dot get chat ID. All right. Otherwise we will move or like we will do this one. So here, what I will be doing in case we don't have our chat ID. So let's create one. So we have chat ID equals create chat ID. And this one will be a method provided and we need to, I need to provide the sender ID and the recipient ID. All right. So let's go ahead and create this method. So this one should return the string and then these are the parameters. So what we need to do first, let's create or format our chat ID. So var chat ID equals string dot format. And then what do we have? We have a percent S for the first string and then percent S for the second string. And then we have the sender ID and recipient ID. So this will create something like this. For example, we will have Ali and the underscore Alibu. So like this is the sender and this is the recipient ID. All right. Let me remove the extra parentheses from here. And this is how we are creating or formatting our chat ID. Then we need to create a chat room object, uh, not repository, but just a chat room. And then let's call it sender recipient equals my chat room object dot builder dot build. All right. And here I will set the chat ID, which is the chat ID that I just created. And then the sender ID, which is sender ID and recipient ID, which is the recipient ID I just received. I will just copy this one and paste it in here and I will call it recipient and then sender. So we need to inverse it. So what we need to do here, so the sender will be the recipient and the recipient will be the sender. So this is what I explained earlier. 
that we want to create two chat rooms, one for the sender and one for the recipient by switching the sender and the recipient IDs for each chat room. All right, so now all I need to do, let's here just return our chat ID that we created and then we need our chat room repository dot save and then sender recipient. And let's duplicate this one and now it will be recipient sender. So now we have this method that will create a new chat and then, so let me also rename it to chat ID to be consistent. So now after creating the new chat, I will return an optional dot off and then this chat ID. All right, so this chat room ID is implemented and ready to be used later on. So now let's move on to the most important part of this backend. All right, now we're done with the implementation of the user and the chat room. So let's move on and implement the chat. So I will create a package called a chat and then chat, I will create an object, I will call it chat message or chat messages. So here you can whether call it chat or chat messages as a package. So it's up to you guys. So here we need getters and we need setters, we need all args constructor, we need no args constructor and builder. And finally, this needs to be a document. All right. So here I want to have a private string ID and this one, I would like to give it an ID annotation. And then I want to have a private string chat ID. So this information will receive it from the front end. And then we want to have a private string sender ID. And then we need also a private string recipient ID. And we need, of course, the content. So let's create a private string content. So this will be the real message or the content of the message that the users will be sending. And finally, I will use a date just from java.util, not local date time. I will call it time stamp. So you can use also local date time, but I just want to use something different each time to show you how to do things or, or how to use different things. All right, so now we have our chat message ready. Let's move on and see what are the methods that we will need in our chat message service. The next step is creating a new chat message service. So I will create a class called chat message service. I'm going to make it full screen. And of course, we need the service annotation and the required args constructor. So here, first, we need a private final chat message repository. This one, we don't have it yet, so we will create it. And let's call it repository. And now let's go ahead and create it as an interface. So here again, we need to extend our Mongo repository and for our chat message and of course a string, which is the type of our ID. We can close this class right now. And then we need also to inject our chat message, uh, sorry, not chat message, but chat room service. So let's call it chat room service. And here we need one method first, which is saving the message. And we need another one, which is finding messages by recipient ID and sender ID. So first let's create this one. So we will have public chat message and let's call it save. So let's call this method save and this save method will receive an object of type chat message as input. All right. So then we need our chat ID and here we will be using the method. This one, the get chat room ID from our chat room service that we created just a few moments ago. So here I will use chat message or uh, not chat message, but chat room service dot get chat room ID. And now I need to provide the sender ID and the recipient ID from this object chat message right here. So chat message dot get sender ID and then chat message dot get recipient ID. 
All right, so let me break this one right here so you can see all the code. And here, if we don't get anything, of course we need the flag. So if we don't have a chat room for this couple, for this sender and recipient, we want to create a new one. And then, or here, let's say just throw. And here you can throw any dedicated exception you want, all right? Here, so you can create your own dedicated exception, all right? So I will leave this up to you. And then what I want to do, I want to do chat message dot set chat ID, which is the chat ID we just got from our database. And finally, repository dot save and then chat message. And finally, I will return the chat message that we just saved, or you can directly return the repository dot save chat message. All right, so it's up to you here. All right, so this is how we can save a message. Then we need to create a second method, which is a public list of chat messages. And let's call it find chat messages. And this find chat messages will take two parameters, string sender ID and another string recipient ID. All right. So then this, this method is so simple. So first we need our chat ID equals our chat room service dot get chat room ID and we need to pass the sender and the recipient. And now we want to say false in case, in case we don't have the room. So this one is just about finding the messages, not creating a new chat room. All right. So also I will just break the lines here so you can see everything. And then like, finally, I want to return my chat ID dot map since it's an optional. If I have my chat ID, what I want to do is my repository. And then I have, or like I, I need to create a method called find by chat ID. We will create it in just a few moments or else we can return just a new array list so that we don't have any messages between these two people, like between the sender and this recipient. Now let's create this method. And this should return a list of chat message. And then that's it. Now let's import this list right here and this find by chat ID. So we want to return all the chat messages from to or from a couple, which is sender ID and recipient ID. All right. So now we are done with the service. Let's move on and create the controller and see some other things that we want to use. And I will explain to you one by one. Now let's create our chat message controller. So I will create a new Java class and then I will call it simply chat controller as a simple name. So chat controller. And then I make it for screen. So here let's make it a controller. And then of course we will need the required arcs constructor from Lombok. And the first thing that we need to do is our chat message service. So I will inject private final chat message service and I will call it chat message service. So let's start with the easiest method we need right here. So we will have a get mapping and this one, it will be slash messages and then slash, we need the sender ID and we need the recipient ID. All right. So recipient ID. So after that, we will have a public response entity and then of type list of chat messages. And then we will call this one. So let's import this. And let's call this one find chat messages. All right. And here we need one path variable. And the first one will be the sender ID. And here we will have a string sender ID. 
all right so the second one will be the recipient id so i will just copy this one to avoid typos and that's it so now simply we want to return a response entity and then dot okay and then our chat message service dot find chat message by sender id and recipient id so this method is like a classic one nothing fancy in here so now let's move on to the chat mapping or the message mapping which will create each time a new queue for user if it doesn't exist otherwise it will just publish a message to the user queue all right so here let's create a public void and then we have process message and for to process this message we need to have a payload as we saw before so our payload will be of type chat message all right and let's call it chat message so then what we need to do we have our object chat message and let's call it saved message equals our chat message service dot save and then we want to pass our chat message all right then we need something to queue or to publish our message or an object to the queue of the specific user or this the queue of our recipient id because processing a message will will send a message from the sender to the recipient all right but before that let's not forget to add this annotation here called message mapping and here let's call it slash chat all right so now let's go back to this point in order to send a message or to publish a message to the recipient queue we need to inject some object all right so here i will do private final and our object is of type simp message so it's simp messaging template let's call it messaging template so this is the object that will allow us to send an object or a message to a queue all right so here after saving the message i will do our messaging template dot convert and send to user since we are sending a topic or a, a message to the user queue all right and for this one we need first the user id as you can see here so string user string destination and object payload so first the user is our saved message or our chat message dot get recipient id since we want to send the message to the recipient and then here we want to specify the queue so it will be queue slash messages so this will be formed as and here let's say for example null as an object and we will fix this one just right away so here we want to send a message to the queue so it will be something like that so it will be as we mentioned before john slash queue slash messages and then john will be subscribing to this specific queue and now for or to send something i want to create a new object and i will call it chat notification so the chat notification will hold the information of the chat id the sender id and then the recipient id all right okay so for that i will just go here right click and then create a new object or a new class and i will call it chat notification so this chat notification will hold the information or a notification for our user or like for the subscriber to our topic okay so this chat notification or this class will have few information first let's start with the annotations we will have of course getters and then setters and then all arcs constructor and no arcs constructor and finally we want the builder annotation and then i want to have few information so first i want to have a private string id so this will be our chat id or you can also call it chat id so again we have private string sender id and we have another string recipient id 
And finally, we have a private string content. Okay, so let's go back to our controller. Let me make this full screen again. And now let's send or let's notify the user. So like this user slash queue slash messages with this object. Okay, so what we want to send is our chat notification dot builder and then let's build and here let's provide the information. So the ID will be our saved message dot get ID and then we have the sender. So it will be also the saved message dot get sender ID and we have the recipient ID, which is our saved message dot get recipient ID. And finally, we have our content, which is from our saved message also dot get content. So you can also get them from the chat message right here. So it's like both of them are valid the way you want to get this information. So let's remove this semicolon from from here. And now we have our back end ready to be consumed by a front end application. So as I mentioned before, for this tutorial, we will be using simple JavaScript, HTML and CSS in order to implement this. But as I asked you before, just comment on the comment sections if you want to see this application implemented using Angular, for example. So if I see so many people interested in this, I will implement also another front end to consume this back end that we just created together using an Angular application or even a React application. So I will be waiting for your comments and as max as I see people posting and commenting out, this, this is gonna motivate me to do that. All right, so now let's move on to the front end part. Now for the front end part, it will be included already in the same application. So here we have the Java resources and then we have these resources and under resources we see that we have two folders, first static and then templates. So we will be focusing on the static one. So here I will just right click and then I will create a new HTML file and I will call it index, right? So this will create an index.html file. So here, for example, if I do an h2 or an h1, so hello from WebSocket application. And if I start the application, then it will automatically open this one. So I will enable the annotation processing. And now the application is up and running, as you can see here. So I will open my browser. And then if I go to the address localhost, uh, colon and then 8088. So this is the address of my running application. We see here that we have this message, hello from WebSocket application. So now this is how Spring works. So every time we have a file called index.html and the resources and then static. So when we open the URL of our application, which is localhost and then the port, so it will automatically display and show this file right here. So now as a next step, let's tr start giving some style and some view and UI to our index.html where we will be displaying the connected users and all the stuff. And I will explain it to you just one by one. All right, so not to make this video too long for nothing and like providing and useful or unnecessary information. So what I did in the background, I prepared the UI for you. So here we have our user interface and it looks exactly like this one. So here we have this title and here you can see my name and we will be having two main blocks. So the first one is where the user can write his nickname and real name and then click enter chat room. So when clicking on enter chat room, this block will be hidden and we will be displaying this one. So on the left hand side, we will be displaying the online users. And here we will have the list of the users. Down here, we will display the connected user full name and we will have a button right here or a link 
to log out and each time we select a user we will load the messages in here and then we have this input right here to type and send the message so this is how our ui looks like also i would like to show you let's in inspect this together and let me show you how this looks like exactly so for example this one the first input which is for the nickname it has an id called nickname all right and then for the full name we also have an id called full name and we have this button submit and all this form is inside a form tag called user name form all right so here just you need to remember this one because you will need them just later on all right next when we move to this chat container this part right here so it's called chat page and then we have first a block we have a user list right here and inside this user list we have this block online users and then we have a list so this list it has an id called connected users and in the bottom right here we have these two button so the the first one is to display the connected user and the second one is the a or the link to log out the user all right then afterwards on the right hand side we have the chat area so the chat area we have this chat area this place right here it has an id called chat messages and this where we'll be displaying the messages from both users from the connected user and also from the user that will send or like the other side of the chat then we have this form id and it's called message form and here we have the input where we can type and send our message all right also here among the css style that i have there is a class called hidden so here i just typed it with an underscore but if i bring it back and i give this class a hidden you see now it's no longer displayed and it will be exactly the same here so for example if i add hidden here it will be displayed like that and once the user is logged in so we will remove this hidden class from here and add it to this one right here so it will be this one hidden and it will be the final ui that we will the user will use in order to see and connect and chat with the connected users all right so this is an an overview of the ui now let me just go back and re tell you about the structure so as i mentioned here we have our index.html page and i created a folder for css where i have all the css for our application you will find all the links and also the source code in the description of this video and then i created also a main.js so this will be our controller where we will have all the logic for our application and finally this is what i already explained before so the css is imported here in the line 6 so it's just a link rel style sheet uh, style sheet and then href and then the, the link and there is a really important part right here in order to be able to use websocket and also in order to use our main.js so here before cl the closing body tag we imported three js scripts i'm going to make it full screen so the first one is the city njs cloud fair and so on and so forth and it's called socjs.min.js so the version might be different if you search for for a recent one but this is what i'm using so socjs.min.js and also i'm using stomp.min.js so these two let's say or let's call them dependencies or libraries are really important in order to be able to use web sockets with with java script so if you don't import these two lines your application might not work all right so now let's move to the action and let's start implementing all the magic of our application so we will implement the, the methods one by one and we, i will explain them also one by one all right so now let's move on all right so in our main.js file the one that we created in here under the js folder and imported in our index.html let's start writing our logic so first of all i need to tell javascript that we want to use strict 
So use strict is a directive in JavaScript that enables a strict mode in your script function, script or functions. When strict mode is enabled, the JavaScript interpreter enforces a stricter set of rules and generates more helpful error messages. This can help you write more reliable and maintainable code by catching common coding mistakes and preventing the use of certain error prone features. All right, so this is the first thing that we need to do. Then we need to create a bunch of constants. So these constants are, are mainly the IDs and the objects that we want to get from, from here. So for example, this username form, uh, the nickname, full name, and so and so forth. So let's start doing this. So first I will create the first constant and I will call it username page because we need to handle this one and this one equals document dot query selector and then I need to provide the ID. So for this one it's the username page and now let's create a second one. So here we have a const and then we have chat page again in the same way. Uh, oops, it's document dot query selector and then let's use the ID chat page. All right, don't forget the semicolons. It will not be highlighted, but I recommend not to forget it even when using JavaScript. So the next one is an another constant. So we will need the username form. So equals also in the same way document dot query selector. And then we need the ID, which is username form. All right, next one, we need a const message form. So a space in here. So message form equals document dot in the same way query selector. And then let's do dash and then message form. So I will continue creating all these constants and then I will tell you what are the constants and which one is used for what. All right, so meanwhile, I created these four constants. So the first one is the message input. This is where we have, where the user can type the message and connecting element, this for the connection. And then we have the chat area and the logout component or the logout link. All right, so now we need to create a bunch of other variables. So first we create the constants and now we need to create some variables. So to create a variable in JavaScript, we use the keyword let or var. So here we need to first create a stomp client object and assign it to a null value. And then we need to create the nickname variable or let's make it lowercase equals null. And then we have full name. Also, let's initialize it to null. And finally, let's create a variable, call it selected user. And I will explain what selected user is for later on. So equals null. And now, first, things that, first thing that we need to do when working with WebSockets and Stomp. So the first thing is to connect, all right? So the first thing that we need to think about is to connect our user to our WebSocket. So for that, I will create a function, call it connect, and I will pass an event as a parameter. So this will be the JavaScript event. And here, first thing I will just do event.prevent defaults. So prevent default means that I want to prevent or to stop the default propagation of this event because I want to manage everything my own. So here, first we have the nickname. Let's get it. So it's document dot query selector and here let's use the nickname id and then i will duplicate this one this line and this will be the full name and let's change it to full name right here so now this when we want to connect so this connect function will be called when the user hits the enter chat room button so this one so like from this form, when the user clicks on enter chat room button, so automatically we will call this connect method. All right. And to in order to be able to connect the user to our WebSocket, we need first to make sure that he correctly typed the nickname and the full name. 
All right, so here next we need to make a small check. So if nickname and full name, so if we have both of these entries, we need to use username page and then class list and then add and I want to hide it. So I want to add the hidden class that I showcased before to the username page. So I want to, to hide the username and now I want to show the other one. So chat page dot class list dot remove and then I want to remove the hidden class. All right, so let's remove this typo. All right, so now we change the behavior of the page and what we need to do next is let's create a variable, let's call it socket equals a new sock.js. And then we need to pass a parameter so the path of our WebSocket. So this is what we configured already in our backend. So let me remind you here. So when we created the configuration of our WebSocket, so here we said that this is the endpoint that we want to add with SOC, with SOC.js. All right, so now I guess you can link what we did before and what we are doing right now. So now let's say our stomp client equals our stomp so equals stomp dot over what exactly okay so it's stomp over our socket okay so it's stomp dot over and then we pass the socket as a parameter and finally we say stomp client dot connect and then after the connection so we have an object and then we can pass two callback methods. So the first one is the output or the first one, for example, let's say unconnected when, so this means when the user is connected to the WebSocket, what we want to do. And also we have on error message or, or error on error method, what we want to do also in case the user is not able to connect to our WebSocket. So for now we don't have this method and we don't have this one. So let's first create this. So I will create a method called unconnected and I will move it to the bottom just after this one in order to have these two methods together. All right, but before that, before that, I want to go to the bottom of this file and here we have the user form name, uh, the username form, sorry, the username form. I will just rename it because we made it a small typo. So the user form, I want to add an event listener on it. So here I will do add event listener. And what is the listener or the event that I want to listen to is the submit event. All right. So here, as you can see, we have the form and the type of this button is submit. So I want to add an event listener to this one. All right. So here, when the user hits the connect, I want to call the connect method. All right, so this is what I want to do exactly. And here I will pass also true as options. All right, so now when the user fills his uh, nickname and, and full name and clicks on enter chat room, we will be automatically connected to the WebSocket and then we will handle the the, con the successful connection exactly so we want to handle the successful connection and i will just duplicate this one and rename it to on error and we will implement it just later on all right so now let's implement this unconnected method all right so what we want to do when the user is connected all right so here the first thing that we do we want to do as I explained before, so the user needs to subscribe to his own queue. All right. So here, for example, let's say that John is connecting. So we need to connect John to this queue. All right. So this is what we are doing right now. All right. So in order to do that, we need our stomp client and then we have a method called subscribe. So we want to subscribe to which queue. So I will be using this and I want to subscribe to the queue called user and then I can use dollar and then brackets 
and then the nickname. So since we know that in our backend nickname is the unique identifier of a user and then queue and then messages. All right. So in this way, we just connected our user to his own queue. So each time he will receive a message, we will be notified. And then after connecting or after subscribing to a method, what we need, we need to call another method and I will call it on message received. Okay, so here we need to create a method called uh, or a function called on message received and we will do it just right away. So I will prepare it for now and we will implement it later on. So here I just created this on message received function. Also, I will duplicate this line. So you remember when we created the user controller, we when the user is connected or disconnected, we want to send something or to send something, some data to this topic or to this queue. So which is called user slash topic. So I want to subscribe also to that one. So here, instead of this, I want to subscribe to user slash topic. So let's say this user slash topic, let's assume that it's a public one. All right. Uh, or user dot public. All right. So and the same way we want on message received. So this meth method will handle the any message that will be received from this topic. All right. So once we subscribe for the different event, what we do want to do is to register the connected user. All right. So here we need to, to register the connected user. And in order to do that, let's do stomp client and then send. We have a send method. And for this send method, we can pass the URL. So it's app slash user dot add user. All right. So and this is coming from the user controller. It's user dot add user and user dot disconnect user. And also this app right here is the prefix that we specified in here in our configuration. OK, so this is the application destination prefix. It's slash app. That's why here we are using app slash user dot add user. All right. So now when we connect the user, so we say dot send and here we need to pass a bunch of parameter. So here let's we can pass options, which is an empty one. We don't need to pass any kind of options. And now let's do JSON dot stringify. So stringify is to transform any object to a JSON. And here what we want to stringify is our nickname equals our nickname. And then we have the full name, which is our full name from the variable right here. And we can also pass the status, which is online as a string. All right. So now we just connected or we just sent something to the user controller to say that, hey, register this new user. All right. So after that, we need to find and display the connected users. All right. OK, so let's do this. Now let's go and write the, the code for this method, find and display the connected users. So here I will create a function and I will call it find and display connected users. All right. And here I will just call this method and I will say find and display connected users dot then because this one will be an async method uh, function. All right because we will be calling a backend. So we need to make it an async. So here I will create first a const and then I will say connected users response equals and then wait. So that's why we need the async because we need to await the response from here. And then I want to fetch and here I want to fetch slash users. And as you can see, so this will return a response and this response will contain a JSON that contains the list of the users. So here I will say let connected users equals await again. And now we, we need to await the response from here dot JSON. All right. So now we have the list of the connected users stored in this variable. All right. So the next one is 
from the list of the connected users I want to exclude the connected user himself like so for example imagine that Ali is connecting right now and I want to get the list of the connected users from the back end so I want to get all of them except Ali so whether we can do this in the back end or also we can filter it in the front end so uh, this is an occasion to show you how how we can apply some filters all right so this one egal connected users dot filter and now for the filter it's a lambda expression or it's called also uh, an arrow function in javascript so here i want to make sure that user dot nickname so the one with an uppercase is not equals the one or the nickname that we have in lowercase so the, the one this is the one that we stored when the user logged in and this one is from the response from our backend from this one right here all right now i will create a constant and i will call it connected users list so for this i'm talking about this list right here all right uh sorry i'm talking about this one right here so this ul object so let me go back here equals document dot query selector and then let's use the connected users or here we can so as you can see here we used query selector now i want let me show you a different method so let's get element by id so we can all also use get element by id and we no longer need this hashtag there all right so now the first thing i want to do is is this connected users list dot inner html i want to initialize it to an empty html so i want to remove everything so now what i want to do from this connected users list so connected users list dot for each and here for each user i want to do something okay so first let me add these semicolons here and now I want to create a method I will call it append user element all right and this one it will take the user and also it will take the connected users list this one right here so I will show you how this method or this function is going to look like and then I want to make a small test so here after each user I want to insert I want also to insert a separator just to sep to separate and display in a nicely looking way my connected users so here I want to add a separator for each element except the last one okay so here if my connected users dot index of user is less than my connected users dot length minus one so this means if we did not yet hit the last element here i want add a separator so and to add a separator let me show you how this is gonna be so here let's add uh, an element let's call it separator equals document not doc but document dot create element okay and the element that we want to create is an li so it's a list a list element and then i want my separator so let me just copy paste this one and then add or uh, first i will get the class list and then add and i will give it a separator class okay all right then I will get the connected users list and then append child and the child that I want to append is my separator all right so now let's move on and create this method right here so create a function and I want to create it global and I will just cut it from here and just move it after this one all right so now let's move on and implement this method all right so now let's implement this append user element so first let's create a const let's call it list item equals document dot create element and the, our element will be li and then our list item let's give it a class 
so we will call it user underscore item so the all these classes are defined already in the css all right so then list item dot id i want to give it an id so the id is the user dot nickname so i want to give an id to this element in order to be able and to be easier to get it the next time all right so now i will create a constant and i will call it user image so i will show you the out the final output later on when we finish this code equals document dot create element and our element we want it to be of type img and then image user or user image dot source dot src equals our image and we will we will place later on an image in our folder called emg and then let's call let's call it uh, even from now user underscore icon dot png all right so this is the user image and then for example we can say user image dot alt equals the user dot full name all right so these are just some attributes and some properties i want to create another constant which is the user name span so all again document dot create element and then span and after that i want to username span dot text content so this will hold the information or the user full name user dot full name all right then i want to create something so when the user receives a new message from one uh, from another user and the user and that specific user is not selected or highlighted i want to display a yellow circle mentioning that there is a new message non uh, non read okay so this is what i'm trying to write right now so here uh, i will create received messages equals document dot create element and this element it's going to be also a span i already prepared the so let me fix this typo i also like have the css for this one and then for these received uh, messages i will add received messages dot text content so i will say it's empty or even let's say zero as you want and then received messages dot class list dot add and then i want to add a class i called it mbr so for number msg for messages and also i want it to be hidden by default and later on i will show you how to display this one all right so now let's add all these items to our list item right here all right so now we have list item dot append and the first element we want to append the user image and then again list item dot append child and then i want to append the username span and finally i want my list item and then append child and this one is received messages all right and finally this list item itself it needs to be appended to the connected users list all right dot append child and then list item all right so with this we are done with this append user elements okay so now if we go or if we scroll a little bit up so here we append user and then we add separator only if it's not only if it is the the last one so we don't add a separator in here and now let's go ahead and add other things so now let's start our application and see the changes that we've made so far so i'm gonna click on debug and this is gonna run my application and then i will go to the browser and i'm gonna guide you what we need to do step by step 
So here, the first thing that you need to do is to go to localhost and then 8081, and this will open the Mongo Express UI. And here we need to create the chat app database. So here type the database name and then create database. So then if you click on it, you will find by default this delete me table. So let's go ahead and delete it. So delete me. So now we have, okay. So this deletes automatically the database. So let's do it afterwards. Now what we want to do is to open the other browser, refresh the, the page. And here we have our application. So I have this one open right here just to trace. So here I will just type Alibu and Alibu Ali as a full name and enter chat room. So here we see that we, we are redirected to the online users. For now, nobody is online, but we have this logout and we see also that we are not displaying the full name. All right, so let's go ahead and see what happened wrongly. All right, so let's go back here. Let's check we have nothing, but let's check what we have here on the connect. So here everything seems to be fine. And on connected, we see that we have nickname and here the nickname, which is okay. So here we have two issues. The first one, this nickname, uh, it's returning the whole the whole element, but we want to we want the value, and then I want to trim just to remove the spaces, and I will do the same here. And now here we see this one is slash slash up. All right, so this is uh, where a typo. And now if I refresh uh, or restart the application, and if we go again to our browser. Let's refresh this one and try to connect again. So here we see that, okay, so th this one hit a breakpoint. So it's saving or persisting a user. And in order to make sure that everything is fine, let's refresh this one right here. So here we see that we have a user table just getting created. Okay, so I can also delete this one. So delete me. And then if we open this user, we see that we have this user right here and we have all this stuff. Okay. So now if I open another tab and type the 8088 and now, for example, if I say John and then John Doe, and we see here that we are displaying this user right here. So what we want to do next, first, let's fill some information. And what I want to do is when I click on this user right here, I want to load all the messages that we have persisted in the database and also display the form where we can send a message and also send a message. So let's go ahead and implement this. All right, so here let's go to this find and display connected user. And then we have this append user element. So here in line 81, I want to add an event listener to my element. So here I will add list item dot add event listener. And then what is the event that I want to add is click event. And then I will say user item click. So this is the method that I want to add. So let me copy this name right here. And now I will create a function user item click. So when I click on a user item, I want to do two things. First, I want to set that item or the clicked one as an active. So I just want to change the background and also remove the hidden from the message form. So we display the form where the user can type a message and then fetch and display the user chat. All right. So now let's go ahead and do this. So first of all, I want to do document dot query selector all. So I want to query anything containing this dot user and dash item. So it's this one. So it's this element that we added and this user item and then I want to do a for each and for each item what I want to do is the following. So I want to do item dot class list dot remove active. 
So I want to remove the active class from everything or from every element of the list. And then I want to add it to the current one. So next we have message form dot class list dot remove and then remove the hidden class. So the message form just to remind you is where we have the input and the button send message. All right, so then I have a const, I will create a const and then I will call it clicked user. Okay, so here, of course, I need my event. So my clicked user here equals event dot get current type. So current target. Okay, current target means the selected or the clicked element. Okay, so then the clicked user dot class list dot add and then active. So I get my clicked element from the event right here. I remove first all the active classes from everyone and then just remove the heading class and then add it, add active to the current user or the clicked user. After that, I want to save the selected user. So this is the attribute or the variable that we created in the beginning. So this will be the selected user that I will be using later on. So selected user ID, or I'm gonna rename it just in a second. So it will be clicked user dot get attribute and the attribute ID. Okay, and here I will call it selected user ID. And once I get the selected user ID, what I want to do, I want to fetch and display, fetch and display user chat. Okay, so the user chat is between the connected user and the selected user ID. So the collected user is the nickname and the selected user ID is the nickname of the selected user. All right, so, and then, then, so just like this. And now we will create a method or a function just, so it will be async and then function and then fetch and display user chat. So we will implement it just in a few moments. And then I want to update the number of messages. Okay. So here I will create a const. Again, I will call it MBR messages equals my clicked user dot query selector. And then I want to query the element having the class MBR MSG as we defined it before. Okay, so and then MBR message dot class list dot add and then hidden since when we click on a user or when we click on the user, we just remove the indication or the notification that the user received a message. Okay. So that's it. Now let's go ahead and implement this fetch and display user chat. All right. So let's go ahead and do it. All right. Now let's implement this method fetch and display user chat. So first we need a constant, which is the user chat response since we are making a call to our backend. So it will be await and then fetch. And what we want to fetch is slash messages. And then we need to pass the recipient ID. So let me just use this symbol right here and it will be slash messages and then dollar and then brackets. And we have the nickname since he's the sender and we have the selected user ID since it's the recipient. So selected user ID. All right, so now we need const another one user chat. It will just hold the response from this one and then user chat response dot JSON. And once we get our response, we have the variable that we created, which called chat area and then inner HTML and let's make it an empty one. So let's empty everything. And now we will just 
start filling the chat. So here we have our user chat and then for each. So let's call this element chat. And then for each element, I want to call a message called display message. All right. And this display message need the chat dot sender ID and then the chat dot content. All right. And we will just, and we will implement it in one second. All right. So after that, I just want to scroll the user to the bot to the top or like to display always the latest message. So here we have chat area dot scroll top equals chat area dot scroll height. So this property right here. So now let's create a function, a global one. I will just move it a little bit to the bottom just after this one. And here we have our element. All right. So, so now in order to display a message, we need first a const, which is a message container. So we need to create a message container equals document dot create element. Okay. And let's create a div element. And then we have our message container dot class list dot add. And here let's give it a class called message, which I already prepared in my HTML and CSS. Okay. So then if the sender ID is the same as the nickname, so if it's the same one, so we want our message container to give it another class and we call it sender. All right. I will copy this one else. Let's give it another one, which is receiver. Okay. So this is just whether we display it on the left or on the right and with a different color. All right. So here we have a const message equals our document dot create element. And then let's create a P element, which will hold the message or the content of the message. So message dot text content equals our content that we received as a parameter from here. And then message container dot append child, our message object. And finally, our message area or chat area, sorry, dot append child, which is our message container. So this is how we display a message. So we will see everything just in few seconds. All right. So now we are almost done. The only thing that we need to do now is when the user types a message and hits the send button. So now we need to add an event listener to that one and send a message. All right. And also we need to implement the on received function. So the on error, we can leave it or we can just log an error message, but it's not something super important, but we need to implement this one. All right. So let's move on and do it. All right. Now, Let's scroll to the bottom and now let's say message form and then add event listener. And also we want a submit event as we did for the other one. And then here, let's say send message. All right. So this send message and then let's give it the option true. And now let's create a function called send message. And let me place it a little bit up. So here, maybe before the on receive and the send message, we also need our event. So first thing is event dot prevent default. And now what I need to do, I need to create a const message content equals our message input, the variable or the constant that we created before dot value dot trim. All right. So this way we are getting the message without spaces like in the beginning and in the end. So then if message content, 
if we have our message content and of course we need to check again our stomp client if we still have it or maybe like like it got um, initialized to a different value so we need to check if we have a stomp client so i will create a const and i will call it chat message equals and now i will have my sender id which is the nickname so the connected user and then we have the recipient id the recipient id is the selected user id and then we have the next one which is the content which is my message content and finally we have the timestamp which is we can pass a new date right here all right so then this is the chat and now i can do stomp client dot send and i want to send it to slash app slash chat and after that we have empty brackets so like empty options and then json dot stringify and i want to stringify my object right here called chat message and once i send this one i want to call again my display message all right so the display message is from the nickname and the message input dot value dot trim or this message content right here all right so we can use directly message content and of course what we want to do is as we did here so to scroll to the top so let's copy this one and paste it just after this if all right so now sending a message is already implemented so the final thing or the final method that we need to implement is the on message received so when we receive a message what we want to do exactly and then we will start testing the application all right now we want to implement the on message received so this method first of all we need to add the parameter which is the payload all right and here there are several steps that we need to implement and we need to think about so first of all when we receive a message the first thing that we want to do is to update the list of the connected users and see if a new user is already connected or has connected so the first thing we need an await and then find we need to call the method find and display connected users so when we have await of course we need to make the function async so it's an async function and then we want to get the message that we received from this payload so let's create a constant called message equals json.parse and we want to parse the payload dot body the body of this payload is the message that we will receive from our or using our web socket so here we want to make a small check if the selected user is not null and if also the selected user id is the same as the message dot sender id so if the same so this means we check if the selected user or the active user that we selected from the list is the one who sent the message so we need to display our message and here we need to send the message dot sender id and then of course message dot content in order to display the message and then we have our chat area dot scroll top equals chat area dot scroll height so it's just to scroll and display the latest message just in case so here we want to do something else here if we have the selected user so if the user or like if me for example as the connected user or the one who's using the application clicks on one of the users on the list so in this case i want to set that user active so what i want to do is document dot query selector and now i want to select the user with having this id so dash and then dollar brackets and here selected user id since it's the id of the html element 
dot class list dot add and then active all right so i want to set it always to active so i know that this is the user that sent me the message else what i need to do is just i want to hide the message form so just in case i don't have any selected user i don't want to display the message form where the user can type a message and send it because when we send a message we need to have a selected user all right so in this case i want to have my message form dot class list dot add and then hidden all right so we need to do one final thing so here we have a we want to create a const and we want to call it the notified user so who is the notified user so this means for example if i have three connected users and i'm talking with the first one and the second or the third user sends me a message so i need to show something or i need to notify the user that i received a message from mr x or mr y all right so here we need document dot query selector and now we need to fetch the sender id all right so here it will be dash and then we have message dot sender id so this is the user that notified me or sent me recently a message so now we need to make a check if we have this notified user if this element exists and not notified user dot contains active so if it's not already the active user so okay so here notified user dot class list contains active so if he's not the active user already i want to set this user active so here i will say uh, const mbr messages for example equals notified users or user dot query selector and i want to select the class or the element having the class mbr dash messages or message and then i want to remove the hidden class so here mbr message dot class list dot remove and then i want to remove the hidden class that i initialized it already in the beginning and also i can say mbr messages dot text content equals empty just in order to have some text right here so all right now i have my application and i have everything implemented except one thing that we need also to add but let's start the application and test it so far and afterwards we will add another small functionality and then we will finally test the whole application all right so before we go and testing i just want to inform you that in the background i created the folder and i also um, imported an icon here i just called it user icon and it just looks like this so feel free to add it so this one is the image that we precised in here all right so now let's start our application and test the changes so now the app is up and running and now let's open the browser and go back again so the first thing that i will be doing i will be deleting all these tables so here this one chat message i will delete it same for chat room so like we will start from an empty state and finally i will delete the user table all right so now we have nothing we just need to create again our database so let's create it so we have our database here and now i will refresh this page and also i have another one in here so from this side i will connect with a user i named it ali Bu, and then it's ali Bu ali and here we see that we no longer or we don't have any more or yet sorry we don't have yet any connected users but also here we don't see that we are displaying the full name it's a small change we will do it just in a few seconds all right so now i will now connect another user so this connect or entering the chat room it whether connects an existing user or creates a new one as explained before so here i will call it john doe and i will click on enter the 
chat so here we see that we are displaying here the connected user users but here on the left hand side we see that we are not up updating the list of the connected users for the other one but here if i just refresh and i connect again we see that we have this user right here so when we click on it we see that now it's active so it has a different background and we are displaying the message so if i say hello and send so we see here from the other side or from the John Doe user we see that we are displaying here this yellow circle right here means that we have a new message so when I click on this user we see that we have the message and if I answer for example hello back we are displaying immediately the message from John Doe and since this John Doe is already the active user so we are not adding any other message or icon indicating that we have a new message so let's go and try to fix this small issue when the user just connects and also we want to display the name of the connected user and we need to implement the logout so let's start one by one i will display the connected user or the full name of the connected user then we will implement the logout and then we will debug and fix this small issue so let's go and do it all right so now first in order to display the connected username so we need to do it the in the unconnected method so here after uh, registering the user then and before displaying the connected users what we want to do is we need to fetch document document dot query selector and then we want to get the connected user full name so here we have connected user full name element and then just text content equals our full name all right so here we just displayed the name of the connected user and now we want to add a logout functionality so the logout functionality we want it anytime the user clicks on this logout button right here or this logout link i want to log out or disconnect the user from the list so here what i want to do i want to add a logout so here we have already the variable logout dot add event listener and then i want to have a click event and here i will just create a method call it on logout and with the options true all right so let's create our function and let's move it a little bit up all right so here we have our function logout so for the logout it's a simple one so all i need to do is to call my stomp client and then send a message to the endpoint slash app slash user slash disconnect user all right so user dot disconnect user and then we have empty options and of course i need to send the json or the user as a json so this one we can take it from here from the unconnected method i'm going to scroll up so it's around this place yeah so we can copy this one and put it in here so i will just break the line so this one is inside and this is our object so we need to send the nickname full name and this one the status should be offline instead of an online all right so here and also what i want to do when or after connecting uh, or logging out a user i want to do a window dot location dot reload so i will just want to reload the page so we redirect the user to the login form again or we can just play with the hidden and the displayed elements all right but we need to uh, remove all the list of the users and all this stuff so a reload is faster also for the logout when the user accidentally reloads the application i want also to inform the backend that this user is getting disconnected so here we can do window dot on before low on before and unload so before loading the page what i want to do here we can use an arrow function and then call the on logout method 
all right so in this way we are logging out our user when we click on the logout or when the user reloads the page all right so now let's restart the application and test these changes and then we can fix the on display or like the display of our users all right so now let's start our application and go and test the changes that we made for the logout and also displaying the connected user so i will refresh the page here and here so now i will log in again with the user named alibu so here we have this user and i think like the user is was connected from the previous session so let's try to disconnect the user so in order to do that just go to the application and then to the user and here let's select this one and make it offline and save and the same for this john doe we can also make it offline and save so now let's refresh and here i will connect with alibu we see that we don't have any connected users and now i will connect with john doe from the other side and we see here that first we are displaying the name from for this one and also the name for this one also here if i send a message so for now it will display the user but we want to display the new user each time a user is connected but here we can also double check so for the user i can refresh this page we see that the status for these two users is online but now for example if i click on log out so this user is logged out and now if i refresh the page i'm expecting to see this one equals offline so and as you can see so the user now is disconnected but here if i refresh the page or if i sent if like the user still exists in here so this means that when i disconnect or log out or log in again i'm not refreshing this one so let's go ahead and check why we have this issue so now let's go back here so now let's check the unconnected so here the unconnected what we are doing so we are subscribing to the queue of the connected user and then the user slash public so then we have we send a notification to websocket to this queue that a new user is connected so let's go ahead and check the controller the user controller where we have this endpoint and see if everything is all right there so now if i go to user controller make it full screen and here we see that we have add user and then send okay so it's obvious here so send to and here it should be to public not to topic it's user slash public all right now we can restart our application but before restarting let's also log out this user so we have both of them logged out and let's restart our application and go back to the browser and test again so now i'm open back my browser refresh again just in case and now i will connect alibu from this side and here we don't have any connected user we are displaying this user right here and now i will connect john doe and i will see if this works so here we see that we have john doe getting displayed from here and now just in case for example let me open the same application again and i will connect another user called alex hunter so here we see that alex hunter is, is getting displayed in here and we also have john doe so this is the separator that we added between the different users so now for example if alex hunter sends a message to alibu so hi alibu and we see that we have a this yellow circle right here showing that we received a message from alex hunter so now i can answer him hello there so the message is getting displayed immediately so now if i send from john doe a message to alex hunter hello hunter for example and i go back here we see that we have a message from john doe so yeah this is how the application works now let's move on to the next phase that was it for today's video i hope you enjoyed it i hope it was helpful and informative for you so don't miss 
following me on YouTube channel, also help sharing this video, help me growing this channel. And I would like to see you also on my website and my social media. I will leave you all the links in the description of the video below. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for interacting. So also, as I mentioned before, if you would like to see the front end part also with Angular, please go ahead, blow the comments and I will make it for you. Otherwise, I wish you a great day.